Hey, all you Training Tuesday listeners, welcome to this week's Training Tuesday. I'm Heidi Reese here at Dayton Superior. I'm the Training Programs Manager, and I just want to go over a couple of items before we get started for today's training. Uh, just so you know, everyone is muted, but I still want you to ask any questions that you may have during and especially at the end of the presentation. We'll have a quick five minute or so, whatever question and answer. Um, and you can do that through the Zoom's functionality, either through the question and answer functionality or the chat. So in addition to that, all of these presentations are recorded and placed out on DaytonSuperior.com's YouTube channel, as well as DaytonSuperior.com's website. And they're all organized by the different products so that you can see what you need if you want to send it on its way to someone else who might need to understand what we're talking about or any of the past ones we've done as well. All right, so like normal, want to let you know that anything that we discuss today is for training purposes only. Any time that you need to use the product or you want to understand more, please go to DaytonSuperior.com and then you can find all of the safety data sheets, technical data sheets, and all information about the products. So real quick, who is Dayton Superior? So we're talking about chemicals today, but not only are we about chemicals, we also do the whole complete gamut for accessories chemicals, and forming with proven solutions for the Simons forming shoring, concrete repair and restoration, bridge deck, rebar splicing, precast and tilt-up construction. So we've got all of the needs that, uh, all the items that you would need, but not only the products, we also stand behind that with our engineering that can assist you with a majority of it, whether it be for chemical specifications or for forming or bridge deck overhang engineering, as well as training. So we're doing a little piece of training right now, but if you need a custom training that will suit your needs, please contact me and Chuck, who is actually out doing one of these trainings at training at DaytonSuperior.com. I'm going to keep saying the word training because I think I've said training 18 more times. Training. We're going to train you how to train. <laughs> All right. So you're here in our gentleman. Let's get into introducing him. So today we're going to be talking about self-leveling underlayment and toppings. That's quite a mouthful, but I'm excited to learn about it because I really haven't had the opportunity to do that in the past. And here with us to teach us this topic is our technical support specialist, Paul Monin. So he is a graduate of Ohio University and has grown up working in the construction supply business. His professional experience includes a wide variety of industry topics and expertise. So what are these He's worked as an environmental health technician in both inside and outside sales positions. And he's effectively provided consultations and great customer experiences within these roles. Paul also understands the business behind the scenes because of his past warehouse management and shipping and receiving roles. And let's not forget his past data analytics. So you guys might not know me for that, but I like data a lot. It seems like I'm this, hey, training girl, but data behind the scenes really proves a lot to me. And he's done that. And it really bodes well that he can provide the skills required to deliver those specifications and lead assistance. And we're really lucky to have Paul here to further his career at Dayton Superior, working alongside the rest of the chemical team. And he can provide that technical support to you, our customers. And guess what? In his spare time, he also moonlights as what? You're a singer-songwriter, right? Uh, that's what they call me. That's what they call you. <laughs> well, maybe if, you, if someone asks a question, you can sing it out loud. Potentially. Right? <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> All right. So, Paul, let's go ahead and start with self-leveling underlayments. All right, Heidi. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and for attending our Training Tuesday. Uh, today's topic is self-leveling underlayments and toppings. Uh, Self-leveling products, uh, ours are cementitious, they are a big business, they're very common, and uh, yeah, I uh, really look forward to um, giving you all this training and uh, answering any questions you might have at the end. So basically, we're going to go through the different types of floor leveling products, uh, underlayments, toppings, and the primers that go down with them. We're going to go over our offerings in this area, our specific products. And I'm gonna go over a lot of general information on application, uh, including surface prep, mixing, and all the tools and tricks and trades of the placing. The first thing I wanted to cover when I made this training and something that I think is probably, like if you're gonna remember one thing from this training is that there are two different types 
of self-leveling, floor leveling products. Underlayments and topics, they're not the same. They're similar in how they look and how they feel and how they're applied, but they are not identical. The big thing with an underlayment, I mean, it's all in the name, underlayment. It lays under a finished floor. So if you have a concrete or a plywood floor um, or some other substrates that we're gonna cover later and you need to level it out in order to put a floor covering down, a self-leveling underlayment is the easiest, quickest way to do that in large volumes. Floor toppings are different. They are, um, most of the time, or the ones we're gonna cover anyway, are self-leveling and they behave in a similar way, but they're stronger. They have more compressive strength and they're designed to survive over the long term as a wear surface. They can be walked on and in some cases even take heavy traffic. Big difference. And in the world of contracting and bags and buckets and job sites, a lot of times these things are not, they're, they're spoken of interchangeably. So I wanted to cover that first. If you get a call, I worked for distributors for years. If you get a call and somebody needs self-leveling, I want to ask them, is there going to be a floor over, or is there going to be a finished floor over it, or is this the floor? Very important stuff, foundational stuff, easy to understand, but very important. So we're going to cover underlayments first. Uh, they're, in my experience anyway, a bigger part of this business. They're a larger driver of volume. They're more commonly spec'd and more commonly applied. Um, there is a lot in this name, once again, self-leveling underlayment. It finds its own level. It's very low viscosity. In the world of cementitious products, this is about as low viscosity as it gets. It's very runny stuff. Water, sand, cement, polymer, uh, very low viscosity mix. It pours right out of a bucket or it can be pumped uh, through a hose. It's very easy to work with and install because it's so low viscosity. It's not like you need a ton of strength to push it around. Uh, these underlayments obviously are designed for interior use only, big caveat. Uh, these are not going under anything outside. Uh, very common in new construction when you're working, especially with plywood subgrades, or if you're looking with a, working with a non-finished concrete floor that you need to smooth out um, for a floor covering later. And once again, because it's so easy to work with and so low viscosity, this stuff is really, really ideal for large areas. Um, you know, if you're working with a small area, we have a couple of uh, more niche products, trowelable products that are probably better suited for small areas. But if you're looking at a big floor that you need to level out, self-leveling underlayment, great stuff. So level layer is our premium, our workhorse, the big time self-leveling underlayment we sell here at Dayton Superior. You can see all the numbers there, um, 5,000 PSI, you know, in the world of repair mortars and grouse, that's not much, but this is an underlayment. It's not taking a lot of structural force. Um, you can see it can be applied at various depths, neat, um, go all the way to a feather edge. So if you have a part of the floor that marks the highest point of the level, you can feather it out over that um, and build it all the way up to two inches neat, or it can be extended with pea gravel up to five inches thick. The big thing, the game changer with these products in their mix design, the reason they are so important in our world is how quickly they turn around on jobs. Uh, we did a mock-up last week in the back. Nathan and I, my boss here at Dayton, it's a corporate office. Walkable in four hours is definitely true. This stuff, it, it dries fast, sets up fast in the chaotic world of job sites and scheduling. Next day, 14 to 16 hours later, you can be back in there installing the finished floor. That's crucial. So once again, easy to work with, works great in large areas, applied at various depths, walkable in four hours, installing floor covering in 14 to 16. That's the name of the game. Nice morph there, Heidi, I like that. <laughs> well, thank you. Econo level is uh, level layers little brother. Um, they're uh, not quite the same, although they are very similar. You can see the compressive strength is less and it's uh, depth variations of neat application is uh, somewhat less uh, variable. Um, so it's a little bit less dynamic, but depending on the demands of the project, a kind of level could very well be uh, spec'd and could meet specs. And you know, we sell a lot of this stuff because it's a lower price point. Name of the game though, once again, turns around fast, walkable in four hours, floor coverings can go down in 14 to 16 hours. Same idea, different product, different name, et cetera. Before these go down, regardless of substrate, the floor needs to be primed. 
We'll go over some other things that need to happen to the floor too, because surface preparation is very important in the world of cementitious products, uh, underlayments as much as any. Um, but these primers have to go down on the floor. Uh, the main thing they do is they ensure adhesion and they prevent pinholing. Uh, these products, as they set up, they tend to bubble. Uh, little bits of air are in the product and they kind of bleed out. Um, and this primer basically seals the um, any moisture or any penetration that might be coming up through the subgrade and prevents it from causing pinholes in the underlayment. Uh, J42 and J42 RTU are essentially the same. Uh, the 42 is a concentrate. It's diluted one to one with water. It appears blue, <coughs> excuse me. And the um, RTU is pre-diluted, ready to use. Um, so it does not need field diluted. There are some um, cases in which the J42 concentrate needs to be applied full strength. So if you find that you're using this stuff a lot, and you, this is the kind of work your company is focusing on doing, I would probably advise buying the concentrate just in case you need to use it full strength. Now, before we put down primer, we need to prepare the subgrade to take an underlayment. I wish I could post this on giant posters all over every job site in America. We can make that happen. You want a blimp? I, I, I'm down with the blimp. A blimp would be great. Clean the concrete, says the blimp, because nothing is going to stick to concrete if it is contaminated, if it has dust all over it, if it has oil, gas, soda pop, whatever it is. Job sites are notorious for creating trash. And you can see here that I like this picture on the right because this is a very realistic example of what a floor will look like that you need to work with. Um, so clean the concrete get all the dust off of it. If there's any oil or grease uh, in the concrete, that needs to be addressed with a cleaner of some kind. Um, definitely make sure that the concrete is ready to take a, any kind of topping. Otherwise, you're going to have issues with adhesion, and that is not good. Self-leveling underlayments that don't adhere are a big problem. A lot of times they need torn out. So measure twice, cut once, clean the concrete. Big points. Um, if you have a tight trout surface, really dense, completely smooth concrete, uh, it's going to be need to, need to be mechanically abraded in order to achieve a um, iCry CSP3. If you have any questions about that, feel free to send it into the chat. Um, I'd be happy to get in touch with you afterwards and send you the resources on iCry's page that spell out the different sur surface profiles, concrete surface profiles, CSP. Basically, it needs to have some texture so this stuff can bite into the concrete. If it's really, really smooth and you prime over it, there's nothing for it to really stick to. So it needs a little bit of a mechanical profile in order to properly adhere. Another really important point, underlayments and toppings are not structural repair products. Repair and fill all cracks in the concrete prior to going over them with an underlayment. Otherwise, those cracks are going to telescope directly through the underlayment. And conveniently, if you ever run into this kind of stuff on a project where you're going to put down an underlayment and you need repair products, we offer those. A lot of times those are epoxies. Um, we can help you with that. So if you're ever on a job and you don't really know what to do and you need to put down an underlayment, and there are cracks to fill, get in touch with us and we can help you out with that. And of course, after you've cleaned the concrete, after you've made sure it has a surface profile and all the cracks are clean, our cracks are filled and you clean the concrete again and again and again, clean the concrete, prime it with J42, then you're ready to go. Also common uh, in self-leveling underlayment applications are wood subgrades. A lot of times you'll see this in residential. Um, the wood floor, just like concrete, it's got to be clean. There's a lot of common sense in here, and I am not a plywood expert, um, but the concrete or the, the plywood needs to be in good condition. It needs to be structurally sound. We aren't using cheap particle board and then putting down a cement cementitious underlayment over the top of it. It's not going to hold up. So make sure that the wood is clean. Make sure that it's in good structural shape, at least three quarters inch thick. We recommend APA rated exposure one exterior plywood with a tongue and groove edge. Um, this stuff can also go down over solid hardwood flooring given that it's in good condition, it's clean, et cetera. This is one of those instances where you need to put down the J42 concentrate undiluted 
um, just so it has that extra stickiness and it makes sure that the cementitious underlayment adheres. I thought this was really cool. I never uh, was familiar with these applications prior to working on this presentation. Um, very common in hospitals are lopper, or lopper, copper, <laughs> copper, <laughs> lopper, <laughs> lopper line, copper and lead lined rooms for MRI machines and x-ray machines. Uh, these metal substrates are perfectly good for an underlayment. Uh, this, if they're really, really smooth, just like with concrete, mechanical abrasion um, to achieve a surface profile so that the primer and the underlayment have something to bite into is essential. And another little trick of the trade there, wipe the surface clean with a residue free solvent. Um, that helps the primer adhere as well. This also uh, gets J42 primer undiluted and then you're ready to go. Put down that underlayment, they can bring in the carpet, they can roll in the x-ray machines and everybody can have fun. Your lopper is ready to go. Your lopper is ready to go. <laughs> this is kind of a different product. I teased it at the beginning. In the world of underlayments, Almost all the time we're talking about self-leveling products because if you're working in large scale applications, it's a heck of a lot easier than traveling. But if you're working with a small area that needs leveled out before a floor is going in, Sure Finish is a great product for that. As opposed to a self-leveling product, this is a non-sag, a trowel grade sort of product. It's very sticky. When you see highly polymer modified on any data sheet, that means it's got a bunch of glue in it, it's sticky. Uh, stands to reason, I'd say, there's no primer required for this. Once again, best use case for sure finish is I have this little corner or this small area where there's a small variation in depth, it's not level, you want to put down a finished floor, sure finish. The bag or two gets the job done. If you're working with this in large scale, you're not doing it right, you should be using a self-leveling product most of the time. Um, this is great because it, once again, cures out super fast. It says on the data sheet that standard floor coverings can come in 30 to 60 minutes after placement. That's pretty brave. I haven't worked with the product personally yet. I'm still pretty new to the Dayton team, but needless to say, the stuff dries fast. It's great for small areas. Great product. Now we're going to get into topics. Same deal as underlayments as far as application for the most part, but this is stronger. It's meant to take traffic. Uh, so if you have like this guy here on the left has a concrete floor that just needs resurfacing or if it's an eyesore, uh, if you're, this is very common in rehabs and renovations and stuff like that, uh, corrects uneven surfaces, finds its own level, and it's also strong enough to stand up to traffic and be a long-term wear surface. Very useful stuff. We have two major topping products, um, an interior and an exterior. Um, interior is level topping. You can see it's a little bit stronger. The 5,800 PSI exceeds level layer by a little bit. There's less application variation in terms of depth. With the topping, it's very difficult to achieve a true feather edge. So we have it down to a quarter inch, to an inch and a half neat, up to four inches extended. Should do most jobs in terms of what you're looking to put a topping down on. Um, not quite as fast curing as the underlayment, but it's not as important that it cures out fast because we aren't putting a finished floor down on the next day. It takes a little bit longer for it to set up and take traffic, um, but it gets stronger in the end, which is the whole point. Uh, there's some finishing options with this as well. Um, if you ever have questions about what you can do with a level topping floor, um, get in touch with us and we'll be happy to walk you through specifics and uh, provide you know-how um, so that you can put down a really cool uh, concrete topping. Morphing again, I love this. Uh, the exterior grade is just a little bit different. Uh, compressive strength is not as high. Uh, depth variation, a little bit more narrow. Uh, but this stuff holds up indoor, outdoor. So let's say you have a concrete patio that's broom finished. And it's in pretty good shape, but it just has some stains and has seen better days. And you want to put down a half inch, something really easy to work with, self-leveling, broom finish it. We have a new patio level topping exterior. If you're working on a loading dock or in a heavy traffic indoor outdoor kind of environment and you wanna put down a concrete topping, level topping exterior, way to go. Um, so yeah, the interior and the exterior product kind of work together, um, similar but not the same. We talked about sure finish as the trowelable underlayment. We also have a trowelable topping. So once again, in terms of recommendations, 
I'm normally looking at smaller areas for an area like this. If you just have a small area that you want to resurface and you want to work with something that's not going to run away with you or run away on you, pardon me. Um, <laughs> it's not running away with you. Uh, as long as, you know, where are you going? Like, yeah. Does your robot go there? I don't see the, I don't see any legs on the bag, so I don't think it's running itself. Can make that happen, <laughs> but uh, uh, thin resurface is great for smaller areas. It's stronger, it's sticky, uh, really thin set stuff, feather edge to half inch, so you're not building this stuff up, um, but it turns around really fast and it works for small areas. So it's a good complimentary product. And uh, this is kind of how all this works together, just to recap our products. You got two major self-leveling underlayments, premium and economical, along with the sure finish trowel grade underlayment, two different toppings, interior, or level topping and level topping exterior and a trowelable topping product, two primers, basically the same, concentrate and ready to use. That's the whole family right there, We're bringing the whole gang. In terms of mixing and placing, I said if um, I could have you remember one thing, it would be self-leveling products, not all the same. There are underlayments and toppings. If I could preach one thing, it is clean the concrete. If I could preach two things, let's check the, T, the TDS for water dosage rates before you mix up any, any cementitious product. Um, but these underlayments and these toppings, they're finicky and they're not all designed the same. A lot of guys in the field are used to mixing based on feel, based on look, and that's the kind of industry knowledge we need in the field. These guys know what they're doing. But quickly, before you go to put down the underlayment, double check the water dosage ratio because it's super important to how the product sets up, how it behaves, how it holds up over time. Just foundational element, read the tech data sheet, check the water dosage rate, very important. When you're mixing basic stuff here, add powder to water, not the other way around. Uh, moreover, gradually out, add the powder. You can't, you can't remove the powder from the water mixture after you've added it. And in order to get a good homogenous, you know, creamy, low viscosity mix without any lumps, without any little pockets of cement that haven't gotten any water on them. You just wanna slowly add that water or slowly add that powder into the water, mix continuously, scrape the sides of the barrel, mix for two to three minutes, get it so there's no lumps. Pumps mix a little bit faster, one to two minutes. And if you're extending with gravel, just basically follow the mixing instructions for the leveling product itself and add the gravel last. I would also add, to make sure um, that your aggregate has been pre-saturated so that it doesn't suck all the water out of your cementitious mix. Underrated industry knowledge right there. Rock sucks water. Concrete sucks water. No. Yep. Now, <laughs> I, I tell you, it, it's simple stuff that, get, that, that hangs up a lot of jobs. Um, these photos, Heidi went to the length of removing the dates from these photos. Sorry. <laughs> these photos are from the year 2000. Um, I just thought it was funny. We have it's been, a, Dayton's an old company and been around forever and we have all kinds of old photos. And I just thought this was a really good example of how this looks when you're putting it down in volume. Um, so if you're working in a big area, you can see these guys have pallets and pallets of bags and they're tossing them into this mixer over here that pumps around the hose into the, the little loading dock over there. And this is what it looks like on the other end of the hose. You can see how runny this stuff is, how low viscosity it is, how easy it is to apply thin. Um, you can see the guy on the left looks like he has, I think that's just like a regular concrete come along. Um, he must know what he's doing. I don't see a gauge rake. Um, I also like the guy in the back leaning against the wall. I was just going to comment that. Like, is Very that important form? role there. Yeah, the, the, the foreman back there leaning against the wall, crucial to any job site. It's usually me. <laughs> me too, me too. Um, I'm not bad at presentations, but I'm not known for my work with the trowel. Um, so yeah, once again, another photo of this pump. Look how, I mean, this stuff is watery, like milky, and that's how it finds its own level. That's why it's so easy to work with. That's why it is great for putting down in large areas. Um, so that's kind of what the magic looks like when you're working in a larger volume. Here are some tools. Um, if you are gonna Go ahead and start a new company after you've gone through this whole presentation today and you feel like I'm ready to bid some underlayments. Um, if you're, especially if you're not working in a pump scenario here, this is pretty much pretty much everything you need. Um, something to mix it up in, a, bu a bucket or a drum, 
you need a drill and a mixing paddle. I put measuring bucket on there because how are you going to measure the water for the technical data sheet if you don't have a measuring bucket? Bring a measuring bucket. Follow the TDS water dosage instructions. Gauge rakes are super cool. Um, if you're looking at the presentation right now, you can see it between the oval mixer and the spiked roller. It has, um, it has that rake and it has a little pieces down there. Those are called cams. Um, you set those up on the gauge rake to set it to different depths. So if you're working in an area and you know you want a quarter inch of underlayment there, you can set up the gauge rake to like basically cut off at a quarter inch. So if you have more than a quarter inch of material, you push the gauge rake over it, it pushes the material. If you don't have a quarter inch of material though, there will be a little space between the rake. You know, you need more material there. Really, really easy stuff to work with. Um, more spreaders, smoothers, squeegees work really well for the stuff. If you're really good at your job and you've been doing this a long time, I would, you can probably get away with just using a regular concrete come along. Um, spike shoes, pretty handy. They help you um, walk on the product as, it, as you're setting it up and it also relieves air by popping little bubbles. That's the purpose of the spiked roller too. Not essential, but they're good things to have. Um, Self-leveling pins are really, they're not in picture here, but they're also pretty handy. If you're dealing with a large area with a lot of depth variation and you don't want to have to remember how much material you need anywhere, everywhere, you put these little pins on the ground. They have measurements on them so that you can look and see when you have a half inch of material, pull the pin. Easy stuff, readily available, cheap, helps you get the job done right. In terms of anything else you might need from Dayton Superior, we're here to bring it. Uh, DaytonSuperior.com is a one-stop shop for anything you need from us as far as tech data, product pages, guides on how to. You can send an email to me and Nathan and request lead sheets. Uh, we have guides on bond breakers, underlayments, and grout. Any chemical product we have that we sell, all of the material you're going to need is pretty much online in terms of what you'll need to get the job done and get specced, anything you'll need. Check out DaytonSuperior.com. This training Tuesday will be there. So if you're like, wow, I watched this great presentation on self-leveling underlayments and I want to send it to all my friends, yeah. Heidi's going to post it later today and there will be a link out there forever. Almost forever. Almost forever. Until the internet goes away, if that ever happens. Pretty much. And yeah. And then we'll, we'll advertise it on the blog that's one away. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no more. No more online. <laughs> but, uh, and yeah, there's the phone numbers for customer service, technical assistance. If you don't know your, your local salesperson, if you haven't met them yet, you can give them a call. Their numbers are right on there. So yeah, anything you need, DaytonSuperior.com. Check it out. And here's all of us, um, all of our, our lovely helping team here. We've got a dedicated tech service line. You can call anytime, email us, get in touch with us. We're here to help. That's what I'm going to do. So um, I'll turn it back over to Heidi. Thanks Fantastic. so much. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. So guys, if you have any questions for him, please enter it in the chat functionality or the Q&A. And I'll give you a second. I want to also reiterate, there's a QR code there for custom training. I started the presentation with it. If you want to go ahead and scan it, that'll go right to Chuck and myself and to what Paul was referring to. You know, we kind of organize it all and we all talk together. And if you need another kind of chemical training, they can do that for you. Don't you love that I made this picture without me in it? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck's in there. <laughs> I, had, I had not even noticed that. You, you let yourself off the hook. Right? Nathan's in there twice. I know. He took my, my spot. <laughs> okay, guys, if you don't have any questions, I'll give it one more second. And if you think of anything later, yep. uh, feel free to reach out to us. You can call the customer service line or you can email me directly at Paul Monin, M-O-N-N-I-N at DaytonSuperior.com. I'm happy to help you with anything I can. Awesome. Well, it doesn't look like we have any. You did a spectacular job. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. And because you did so well, I'm going to make you do some more. So guys, stay <laughs> tuned for <laughs> next month. We're going to try to do a chemical at least once a month. And thank you, as always, for joining Training Tuesday. Until next week, I'll see ya.